minute. Thanks for joining us. Hey, yeah, how are you? How are you? All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, if you have a question for Martin, just continue to keep your hand raised and we will get um, or call on as many questions as we can in the time that we have. To kick us off, we're going to start with Jeff Gluck. Gluck, go ahead with your question for Martin. Hi, Martin. I'm wondering um, if you can tell me one um, dark horse team or surprise team that you think could make a run in the playoffs. Well, I don't know. Uh, that's, a, that's a real tricky question there, Jeff. Um, I'm going to, if, if you want to go with a dark horse, I'll, I'll have to say Cole Custer. Interesting. Why is that? I don't know. Just, just, <laughs> I just picked him. <laughs> I mean, he'd be, he's an underdog, right? He's a rookie. He's, uh, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't expect a lot of surprises in general. Uh, when it comes to playoff time, I think the strong teams always rise to the occasion. Um, but you asked me for a dark horse, so I picked my dark horse. <laughs> I did. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we're going to take our next question from Mark Garrow with PRN. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Martin. You're welcome. I'm, I'm curious, this, this round, you know, ends at Bristol. We've seen a lot of physical contact. You've been on the, the bad side of it, a track like Martinsville uh, in a playoff. Do you, th do you think the aggression level is going to be up uh, the way this is laid out, Bristol being a cutoff race here in round one? Yeah, I mean, I think it has that potential, you know. I think anytime you're at Bristol, it has that potential. Um, you know, I think any cutoff race, that's always uh, – it always seems to raise the potential for that. Um, but, you know, you think about the all-star race being there and, and thinking about, you know, no points and everybody going for it, and we've seen a pretty tame show. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, I think you look at Bristol, it's hard to really predict what's going to happen, you know. Depends on a lot of things. Depends on, uh, you know, the PJ1 and the tires and the, um, you know, whether it's a full moon or not, I guess, maybe. Um, but we've seen Bristol will be a lot of different kinds of races, you know, you know in the last couple of years, really. And, and it has potential to go crazy. It has potential to be calm. You know, I just don't know if you can really say uh, what's going to happen there. Thank you. You're welcome. Take our next question from Dustin Long. Dustin, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Martin, as you go into these playoffs, what are you curious to see? What, what's kind of, uh, you know, obviously in the media, we always have our questions of the uncertainties. What, from your point of view, what are you curious to see? Um, you know, really, I'm just uh, focused on, you know, our team, what we've been doing. Um, you know, I'm curious to see if we can step it up to the next, that next level. I feel like we can. I feel like we're right there on the cusp of it. Um, you know, you look at what we've done, you know, the last 10 races and I feel like we've been, uh, we've been a top three car every single race. We've had, you know, opportunities to win, uh, slip away. So hopefully, you know, I, I look forward to seeing if we can, you know, take those second, thirds and fourths and turn them into wins. I, I mean, I think that's, you know, that's ultimately what it takes to be able to win the championship. And, um, you know, if we can do that, uh, I'll be happy. So that's what I'm ready to see. And, uh, hopefully we'll see it soon. Okay, we're gonna take our next question from Kelly Crandall. Kelly, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Martin. Is everyone racing? Kelly. For, is everyone racing for four spots at Phoenix or two, given the advantage that Kevin and Denny have on the rest of the field? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I still think um, there's probably at least three open. You know, I mean, there's no guarantees, right? I mean, yeah, those guys are running good. They have a lot of playoff points, and and I've been in that position before. And I think even in that position, you still understand there's opportunity, um, you know, that, that you maybe couldn't make it. Uh, it would be a huge disappointment. It'd be a huge surprise if those two didn't make it for sure. Uh, but there's always outside opportunity. So, um, yeah, there's a chance that you're only racing for two spots. But, you know, again, um, you never know. And, and you, you know, you, I think for us, we go into the playoffs and, and feel like, went around, you know, race every round, then you're set. So that's kind of our mindset. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Jordan Bianchi. Jordan, go ahead. 
Uh, Martin, I'm wondering if you and Danny ever commiserated over how Homestead unfolded for you guys last year, where you guys both had fast cars and then things happened and took away that opportunity to win the championship. No, we hadn't really, um, you know, talked about it. Honestly, it's, it's water under the bridge, you know, I mean, it's part of, uh, it's part of racing things, you know, some days it's your day, some days it's not. And, um, you know, for both of us, it wasn't. So uh, I don't know that either one of us would, um, would even care to talk about it when we didn't have to, to <laughs> you know what I mean? It's one of those things. So yeah, we've never, never talked about it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Davey Siegel. Davey, go ahead. Hey, Martin. Uh, being your first playoffs with James atop the pit box, how do you anticipate that affecting how you guys maneuver your way through the next 10 weeks, or do you think that there won't really be a change? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, you know, I, I feel good about, um, you know, James, uh, his, his decision-making, and, you know, I think throughout the year he's gotten stronger, more confident in his decisions. Um, that's really the key, you know. I mean, you know, I, I feel like he's a guy that's not going to crack under pressure. That's that's really the main the main point, I guess. Um, you know, if you have a guy that's that's prone to crack, and you're, <laughs> it's never a good feeling when you're like, okay, the caution comes out. What's what are we going to do? Uh, well, we could do this or we could do that, or you know, I think he's gotten pretty good throughout the year, so I have confidence in him. And um, you know, there's going to be, I'm sure, some ch some chances for that to get tested. Uh, in the playoffs, but I feel like he's going to do a good job with it, and, and we'll see how it goes. Cool. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to take our next question from, let's see here, Rebecca Cottingham. Hi, this is Rebecca Cottingham from um, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Um, thanks for taking the time, Martin. You had success in 2019 at Richmond, and Richmond is one of the tracks that you will be heading to. I know you have a new crew chief, but do you feel like y'all are going into Richmond well prepared? Yeah, absolutely. I feel uh, I feel really good about it. I'm I'm looking forward to that race, and um, you know, it was unfortunate that we missed uh, we missed out on that first one this year. Uh, such a great track to race at a lot of fun and um you know i, I feel uh, very confident in uh, in our abilities to go there and, and be competitive and hopefully hopefully pull off the three peat but uh it's going to be a challenge you know no practice again and going back to the low down force package for richmond um that we raced there uh, two years ago uh, it's going to change things up so we'll have to be uh be ready for that and and um and prepared but uh, i know it'll be a good race i'm looking forward to it Thank you, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Lee Spencer. Lee, go ahead. Thank you, and thank you for joining us, Martin. Um, having well, won a championship, um, I'm curious your take on Tony Stewart had a remarkable comeback in 2011. Is your teammate Kyle Busch, who has two championships under his belt, capable of doing the same thing, having had such a terrible regular season? Uh, yeah, I would say absolutely. I mean, I think if you look at, um, you know, you look at our organization, how strong, you know, it is. And, um, you know, you look at Kyle, what he's been able to do over the years. And, you know, um, they just, if they got hot, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, he's run well enough this year. He's, he's close that, you know, he probably should have a few wins if it wasn't for uh, some crazy things happening as well. So, um, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, I, you know, I, I would say uh, I'm against it happening. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I'm the guy that does that, but it's definitely a possibility. Good luck to you and James this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question. Let's see here from Stephen Toronto at 24-7 Sports. Go ahead, Stephen. Martin, I wanted to ask you this question, given that the Southern 500 is this weekend. As, as we talk about the 2021 schedule and future schedules, there's been a lot of conversation about maybe having more shorter races and having 500-mile uh, races like Daytona, like Darlington, like the Coke 600 be more selective. Do you Would you agree with having less 500-mile races on the schedule, and do you think that that – race distance should be uh, reserved for uh, marquee crown jewel events? I mean, I, in my opinion, I mean, I feel like there's a few races that you just can't change. And, um, you know, the Darlington is one of them. 
You know, there's Daytona 500, there's Southern 500, um, there's Coke 600, and there's Brickyard 400. There, those are those names and numbers go together, right? So, um, I think absolutely, there's there's time for it, and there's definitely opportunity for races to be shorter. I think, you know, this year, as as tough as it's been, and as unfortunate as it's been for uh, for so many people, and and just for all of us, really. Um, but especially, you know, for the sport to try different things and get to see how they work with, you know, we would have never done no practice, no qualifying ever. It would, it would have not happened if it wasn't for COVID. And now we're talking about maybe next year doing some of these weekends. Um, you know, we would never run shorter races. We would never run midweek races. All these things that were never going to happen, um, happened this year because of, um, you know, the virus. So as bad as it's been for everybody, there's been a little bit of opportunity for NASCAR um, to try things. And I think it, we've seen, you know, shorter races work. We've seen people enjoy those. And we've seen, you know, midweek races and, and, more, and double headers, all these things that have worked well. So I think, you know, the opportunity is there for all of them, but for all those things to happen in the future. Um, but there is a handful of races that need to stay um, the length that they are currently. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question here from, let's see, John Newby. Go ahead, John. Thank you. So yesterday, uh, Clint was talking about capturing momentum once you enter the playoffs, right, in that wave to the championship. Considering that you've been potentially the most consistent driver all year long, does that play in your thinking and your strategy heading into the playoffs, or is that less of concern since it's just a new season? Uh, no, I definitely think that it's a positive thing, and I think it's something that we've looked at and, and you know, feel good about. Um, you know, in racing, um, you know, consistency is always a big key. You know, um, winning a race, you know, getting lucky, winning a race here or there uh, to get into the playoffs doesn't give you a great feeling that you can go win a championship. You know, running top three, top four every week gives you a great feeling about going to win a championship now um it's easier to go from second or third to first than it is from you know 15th or 20th to first so it's uh it's a good feeling I, I feel you know again i've been saying for weeks that i feel really really good about our team and where we're at right now and um i feel as confident as i ever have coming into the playoffs so i um, definitely excited about the next 10 weeks and i'm um, looking forward to you know making something happen perfect thank you sir and good luck thank you Okay, we're going to continue here with a couple more questions. Our next question is going to come from Jeff with Empire Sports. Jeff, go ahead. Hi, Martin. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, you know a thing or two or three about uh, making the Final Four in the NASCAR playoffs. So in your opinion, what's the one trait you need to make it into that Final Four? What is the one X factor in your opinion? Well, you got to be resilient. Um, there's going to be there's going to be times throughout the playoffs where your back's against the wall, where you know you need to make something happen. And um, you know it's been been the case for us, you know, throughout the years. Whether it's been a uh, you know a, a, a season where a lot of things have gone right, or a season where some things have gone wrong. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's um, you know ten races to get in, and you got to be resilient. You're going to find you know face challenges at some point along the way. Thanks, Martin. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Eric Smith, Race for View Online. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, yeah, Martin, um, obviously you said you're pretty confident coming in the playoffs, but is this one of the more pressure-packed playoffs but. with playoff points? Um, <laughs> coming in with only 14 of those, does that almost make you have to be kind of perfect these first couple of rounds just to, to get through? Um, not really. I mean, I think, you know, the first couple of rounds, you just, you don't want to beat yourself. And then, um, you know, obviously as it, as it narrows down, as the field gets stronger, um, you know, things become more difficult. It's harder to gain points, you know, as you whittle down the field, as the stronger guys rise, uh, you know, granted that, you know, if we're still one of them, um, you know, it's, it's hard to gain. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we've been in position before where, um, you know, the first, in 2015, we made the Final Four without winning a race. We, we did it by consistency. We didn't have a lot of playoff points. We've been on the other side of it. We've had the most. And, um, 
and didn't even need them. So I, I think, you know, that that's what I look at is the years that we were strong and we were consistent. We had a lot of playoff points. We didn't even have to use them. That's what gives me confidence is that hopefully we can, we can repeat that and not need them. But yeah, you never know. I mean, certainly, uh, I would feel better to have them because it always gives you that that thought of, hey, we can have a mulligan here or there, right? If we have something crazy happens, um, you know, we can get through it. And, you know, not having that is is tougher to deal with for sure. There's no question about it. Thanks, man. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Kelvin with ROC Sports. Kelvin, go ahead. Hey, Martin, just kind of touching up on that one right there. You have the 14 stage points going into the playoffs this year, but looking at the first three races of the playoffs, at Darlington, you have 55 stage points dating back to 2017. Then you have 84 at Richmond and then 32 at Bristol. How, how much confidence does that give you knowing that these three racetracks, you're able to capitalize on gaining stage points in such a tight contested battle this year? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I hadn't really thought about it. Those are, uh, those are a lot of stage points though. So that's really, uh, that's a really cool thing to hear. Um, but I mean, honestly, I, I don't, I, I don't uh, really look at it that way. I just look at, you know, these are, you know, a couple of tracks where we can win for sure. And, um, you know, it's time to execute. So let's go, uh, let's go get a win here in the first three. Thanks, Maureen. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay. We're going to take our next question from Scott Chancy. Scott, go ahead. Martin, what is the one thing you feel you can put your finger on that during these last few races, what's kept you from third and fourth place to first? What do you feel is going to have to do that one thing to get that win? Well, um, I guess it depends on which race, you know, I mean, there's been different things here and there. Um, you know, I think, if, you know, at times we haven't been the best car and at times, you know, we have been so, um, it's really not just been one thing. I think it's it's a combination of things. We've had a few races where, um, you know, the strategy kind of got, um, you know, m mixed up a little bit and, and we lost control of the race on a few of the races I felt like we probably should have won. Um, but I think in general, you know, we've, we've pretty much, uh, you know, other than maybe two or three races optimized, you know, what we had and, and ran second or third. We're going to take our next question from Cole Casuno. Cole, go ahead. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, Martin. I want to look ahead to Phoenix and that new rules package. Uh, you ran well there in the spring and performed great at New Hampshire. How crucial is it for you guys to perform well and add to that notebook at Richmond next week, given the track similarities? And how confident are you uh, with what you already know with that package? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's important to, uh, to run well with the package. Uh, more so than it is to run well at Richmond. You know, I, I think Richmond and Phoenix are very, very different racetracks. I mean, um, I just, I don't, I don't see a lot. Uh, I don't see a lot of correlation there just because of Richmond, you talk about, you know, high tire wear, high fall off um, and, and Phoenix, you really don't have that. So I, I think that's, it's a lot different, but I think running well with this package and have a confidence with it is, is obviously a huge, huge deal so you know running well at new hampshire is um is probably you know closer resembling uh to phoenix and and the things you fight there so um yeah it feels good uh you know to run well uh in the spring race i think you know phoenix is a pretty i would i would say phoenix is pretty unique in, in a you know mile type track and and that you're probably going to lean on and think about uh, how you ran there in the spring more than any of the other tracks so um it was good to run well there we ended up getting run over but um, yeah, that's, that's part of racing and, and we definitely weren't good enough to win. So we need to figure out how to, how to find more. And we've been close there, um, with the low down force package in the past. Um, we've run second, we've run third, we've led some laps here and there, but we've never been a dominant car. And, um, you know, we're obviously if hopefully we'll be in the final four and, and have to have to, you know, figure this out, but, um, you know, it'd be nice to figure out how to, uh, you know, be the guy to beat there. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Martin, we appreciate your time. Um, that's all the time we have for questions, but we appreciate it. And uh, you can go on to your next stop. You're welcome, Amanda. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Take care.